Thank you for auditing Professor Sky's record review. You'll need first listen to New Music Review Show, hosted by a French professor who could not wait to review the new track from Kanye West, Wash Us in the Blood. I, listen, this is not gonna be a reaction video. I don't think reaction videos are particularly useful. It's just people going, what? Whoa, what did he say? What did he do? But I'm gonna be honest. Uh, I heard this song when it came out, and for the next like six hours up until I recorded this video, the entire time in the back of my head was, whoa, hey, what did he do? I actually went and I participated in another Black Lives Matter protest, and, and I was there and I was talking to people and I was, you know, explaining things and some lady drove up oh, all lives matter and that whole time and I was talking to my kids and I was explaining all of the difficulties and the whole time in my head this song was just going and this video was just going and I was thinking what am I going to say about this what do I think about this more importantly what does it mean does it mean as much as it feels or is it just something that feels like it means something this is going to be as best as I can do a review of this song but I need to make a caveat if you don't already know I am a complete believer in Kanye, to the point where I say, honestly, that he is the greatest living artist. I do not think that he is the greatest living musician, or the greatest living rapper, or the greatest living producer. I don't even think he is relatively close on either of those three things. But in sum, I think he is the only person, I believe, on earth, who can do what Picasso did. Change the world, at both the highest levels, the mid levels, and the low levels, and make people change the way that they see existence and reframe everything. I believe it completely. I believe that history will vindicate me, despite all the fights I get in on Facebook with my friends. Uh, I really believe it. So I was extremely, every time he releases a song, it's the most important thing that's happened that week. That's what I believe. And so here we are. First of all, you may be distracted by the Confederate flag behind me. Do you know why I have a Confederate flag bag? Did you know I spent $40 for that? Do you know why I spent $40 for that? Because Kanye made it. That's from the Yeezus tour. That's the kind of thing that Kanye can do where he can recontextualize things or just make you think in a way which maybe is not always as deep as he thinks it is, but is deeper than most other things that are in our culture. I am such a Kanye fanboy that for Father's Day, <laughs> My kids, half as a joke, got me a Kanye coloring book, and of course, Kanye cologne. That's not a joke. Uh, my wife, the uh, Mrs. Dr. Payne, will not let me wear it. So here we are. Here we are with this song. If you haven't watched it, this video is going to be meaningless. It takes three minutes to watch. Watch the video. Don't just listen to the song. Watch the video. Wash us in the blood. My quick take on it is that this is this year's This Is America. This is Kanye's version of This Is America. What do I mean by that? Well, it's a summer jam, right? It's a catchy song, it's a hard-hitting dance beat. Much like This Is America, it's catchy despite itself. It's not that there's like a particularly hard-hitting easy hook, you know, like, ooh la la, this is America, ooh la la, right? And there isn't that in this song either. But there's something about the rhythm, the pulsing rhythm, the bizarreness of the song that's completely infectious and it's very danceable. And of course, it's paired with this video that makes you think, that pulls no punches, that makes you question the nature of black greatness, of, uh, of, of black excellence, uh, black ignorance, uh, black oppression, black everything. It just puts it all out there in a way that makes you supremely uncomfortable. I would say that Childish Gambino's version is nice and it's cool and it's well done, but it didn't make me feel half as uncomfortable as this video does. I read a lot of the comments underneath the video. It's always interesting. And one of them said, this video is just as crazy as Kanye. Um, I don't think that's right. I think this video is just as crazy as our country. <laughs> Kanye is not crazy, we're crazy. And he's helping us to see it with this song in this video. But that'd be doing it an injustice. I think I need to treat these two things completely separately. Not separately, but together. Because there's the video and there's the song. And I think as, a, as, a, as, as an artist, one of Kanye's great skills is finding people who are better at the things that he is trying to do. Better producers, better rappers, better fashion designers, and in this case, better artists to come out with something fascinating. And that's what he did with Arthur Jaffa. Now, 
I knew of Arthur Jaffa because I like Spike Lee and he happened to do the cinematography for Crooklyn, but I'd never seen any of this sort of experimental art house films. If you just take a quick search on YouTube, you'll find some videos and you will see that this video is not really a Kanye video. It is a Arthur Jaffa video with a Kanye song. But it just happens to be that these things match each other so unbelievably perfectly. It seems almost uncanny. Sorry, I just needed to mess with the light there. I didn't, I can never tell how bright these ring lights are. So I was going blind, but <laughs> I didn't know if I was going blind enough. So uh, if you look at other videos by uh, Arthur Jaffa, you'll see a lot of the same, the same style and even the same images, like the gospel singer who you sing, you see sw uh, singing, the images of, of like suns and planets and everything all being mixed up and this whole like these thematics of, of black excellence and then, uh, you know, African Americans, doing very questionable, scary things, right? Kind of all mixed together. And I think what it does is it creates this great juxtaposition where you're never comfortable, you're always trying to find, the thing is that with a video like this, right, you want to get to the answers. Like, like why is there a drone next to that person? Hmm, is this saying, does the goat represent Satan and the lamb represents God and what is it? I don't think that's actually the point. I think the point is just the sheer emotional drain of this video. The fact that you actually see uh, Breonna Taylor, right? You actually see her in the video mixed in with all these other images. Uh, it is able to create an amazing feeling. And again, what does Kanye do super well? He finds great artists and he lets them do what they're supposed to do. Okay. I would say the one exception, I think, what does make this a Kanye video, and not just finding someone and telling them what to do, or let them do what they do, is the opening and the ending. I think opening up with a very unpleasant scene of a police confrontation in 2020, you can tell by the masks, would be very useful in the future if you're trying to identify when, when something happened. You'll know if it's 2020 because of the masks. So a very unpleasant police confrontation, and then it ends with his daughter singing at the gospel service, uh, in his family, you know, for, for the Sunday service. And I think that must have been Kanye's choice. And I think that's the hope that's coming through here, that the entire video is a slog, like it's miserable. Like you're just, you see things and you're just stressed out the whole time and the music is stressful and you're just constantly stressed out. And then it ends with this beautiful moment of peace. And that's really what the question is, is that um, if, we're, if this video can be seen in the context of Black Lives Matter, and I think it has to be seen in the context of Black Lives Matter, what is it that we are fighting for? Not they. What is it that we are fighting for? What is humanity fighting for? We are fighting for something as simple as our daughter dancing around on camera, just getting to be a little kid. Like, all the stuff that we see leading up to it leads up to this point where... African Americans should feel security and safety knowing that their lives are valued as much as anyone else's. I wish I could have explained that to that lady driving by today at the protest. Our lives matter, do the research. Do the research? What research are you doing? Anyway, I invited her to come to stop. I said, please stop, please come in and I'll discuss this with you. She said, I will, and then she just drove off. So what are you gonna do? I would say that the exemplary image, um, the image that defines this video maybe better than anything, I don't know, or the image that drew me in the most is this computer image in the middle of the video of an ocean made out of chains. It's so beautiful, it's so evocative. I think it's just about, well, very clearly it's about the Middle Passage that Africans were brought to this continent on slave ships in chains, many died in the ocean. You could sort of see the entire ocean being made of these slave chains. It's just so beautiful and it matches perfectly with the theme of the song. The thing that Kanye is able to do is he is very comfortable in the uncomfortable. He sold me this bag. I bought this bag and display this bag in my house. Do you know how uncomfortable that makes me? Do you know how much I dislike the Confederate flag? But Kanye made it. <laughs> and I sort of get his point. I sort of get why he did it. But he is totally comfortable doing that. Comfortable in making you uncomfortable and keeping you in that uncomfortable space. Another thing that I think is important for the video that emphasizes a lot of elements of the song 
is this image of the cars doing donuts. So, you know, the, the music is very... I'll get to the music in a second. You know, it's very kind of upbeat, kind of cool music going on. Um, and then there's this, this awesome scenes of these people doing donuts. Like, they must be going like 60 miles per hour in their cars, and they're doing the drifts, and they're in these little tight circles, and you just build up so much tension. And the dad in me sees it and just goes, oh no, someone's going to get hurt. That's very unsafe. But I've watched a thousand rap videos. I've watched a thousand rap videos where people go around in circles and they drive their Lamborghinis and do the little spins or they get on the ATVs and do wheelies or Meek Mill stuff and all that. No one ever gets hurt. But then in the song, then in the video, the car fish tails out and like 30 people must have got hit. Someone must have died. That tension is resolved, but it's resolved in the wrong way. And that goes into the absolute apocalyptic, apocalypto feeling of this song and the video. That that tension that's built up is released, but it's released in the wrong way. Kanye's not crazy, we are crazy. <laughs> I really wanna insist on that. Um, and let's kinda get to the music itself. So I think production-wise, I guess it's this guy, Ronnie J, who made it with him. Um, the thing that I've seen the most, and I've done a little bit of, I've watched a couple other videos about this song. I mean, I'm just, this is like when a new Star Wars video comes out. Like, like I just, all I wanna do all day is think about this song. <laughs> and probably if you're watching me, you're like me. You're just like, Kanye comes out with something new and you're just like, this is all I wanna think about forever. Uh, a lot of people say that it, it's getting back to the Yeezus sound. It reminds us of Yeezus, doesn't it? Because it's raw. No, this isn't like Yeezus. This would be totally out of sync on Yeezus. To say that this could fit on Yeezus, I think, misunderstands what makes Yeezus so great. This is like kind of a dance track. It's a little bit industrial, but not primarily industrial. This song is way more aggressive, way more raw, and it's not catchy at all. I mean, even a song like Send It Up, like the most sort of aggressive song on Yeezus, is a lot more kind of catchy and danceable. And moreover, the Jesus energy completely erases Jesus to me. When I listen to Jesus, I hear somebody who is just about to kill himself. Like I hear somebody who's at the very edge of his sanity. Like I remember seeing the concert in Toronto and then to a lesser extent Albany. That was a bad show. Um, I remember thinking like, I'm glad I've seen this because I don't think he has much longer to live. He has to find some way to save himself. Maybe it's this Kardashian lady, she seems nice. Um, maybe it's this Jesus fellow who, who showed up at the end of the concert. But I had the sense that he was about to die. That's the feeling of Jesus to me, that just the absolute raw nerve. And this doesn't feel that way to me. This is his post Jesus is King feeling. And, and to me, the, the, the singing in the background and the, the inspirational Jesus references are very different than the things that came on Yeezus. Moreover, you know, there's have kind of like a lot more kind of trap sounding hi-hats. There's even some like triplet flows and just the thematics. So yeah, it's raw. And I guess in that way, it's kind of Yeezus-like. And blood on the leaves has the word blood in it. And this has wash us, in, wash us in the blood. But these aren't at all the same thing. So I don't know. I think that's oversimplifying. I think this portends, ooh, fancy professor word. I am a professor. This portends something great for his next album. Because if he can do the gospel Jesus, I am saved stuff, while matching it with a rougher aesthetic, I look at what happened. We got this song. We got this awesome song out of that. And I hope he continues to do it. I would say the song almost doesn't exist. <laughs> I mean, it's catchy, right? Like right now I've got it stuck in my head. But it almost never really starts. Um, maybe the, the biggest stylistic change, I would say, from here to, 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 to Yeezus is that during Pablo, he started realizing that there was artistic value in mumbling and making it seem like you didn't mean to record. The entire song starts off with him talking. It's like, rain on the rain, and I got the dump gonna rain on it, and it rains. And you get the sense the engineer must have been like, uh, you wanna do that again, Mr. Ye? No. Uh, and just that, that whole sound, that, that feeling, almost makes you feel like the song hasn't quite started. And even the way that the Travis Scott comes in, the whole time, like, th there's not a lot to hold on to, except for the atmosphere that it creates. This absolutely 
apocalyptic atmosphere. I think what really makes it is the person who I'm calling the guy screaming in the back. So right now, I'm recording this the day it came, came out. There's two things I don't know, two crucial pieces of information which I don't know and might not matter. One, who is the guy in the video with the teeth and the hair? Uh, who's that guy? I don't know, it's gotta be important. I'm sure I'll know tomorrow morning. But as of the night of June 29th, 2020, I don't know. The other question is, who's the guy who's screaming on this track? Is it the producer? Is it some preacher? He is making the song perfect. Because Kanye, in his rapping style in this song, I would say more than anything on Jesus is King, actually has evangelical fervor. Like you really feel that he's got the spirit. But I think it's with this other guy saying, you know, it was the blood that, ooh, it was the blood that God, the energy that comes into it. It's not just that gospel singing of all of us together and lift up the voices to the Lord. It feels like a, <clears throat> you know, like a preacher, like coming at you. And even the, just the, the image of blood. Okay, I get it. The washing in the blood means the salvation of Jesus. I get it. Fun fact, my, my grandfather was one of the monuments men who saved the Ghent altarpiece from the Nazis. One of the most famous images of the blood of the Lamb of Christ. But that has nothing to do with this, but the question of the blood of Jesus cleansing us, okay, fine. But Kanye's not talking about the blood of Jesus like, like a kind of nice wood. He's talking about rain. He's talking about thunder. He's talking about like being drenched. He is like, I mean, if you actually did a video of this song and you actually kind of did it in a Mickey Mouse way where you illustrated everything that he was saying, you would be like that scene in Blade. <laughs> Remember that scene in Blade with the awesome uh, New Order remix? Uh, uh, confusion, you know, and like, and Blade's running around and, and got the sprinklers coming down and he's like killing all the, killing all the vampires. That's kind of what this would be like. The aggression and the violence in this imagery, I think really matches it. You have to excuse me. If you hear some screaming downstairs, that's my son playing Grand Theft Auto. He's playing it with his friends online. So because of the nature of this video, you know, Travis Scott, I'm, I'm gonna not even tell him to be quiet. But this concept of rain, this holy rain cleaning everybody, I think it deserves to be seen in a different context than just simply, oh, please, Jesus, save us. Please save us. Because usually when we say that, we're talking about water. We're talking about being washed in the holy water and the cleansing. How the hell do you get cleansed from blood? This is dark. And I think it's important. It's importantly dark. And it goes with the video. And it goes with George Floyd. And it goes with seeing Breonna Taylor in the video. That like, this is the reality. That if we want to have little girls, you know, dancing around and just kind of absently hanging out with their parents, we need to confront and we need to have this rain. Now listen, I, I personally don't think this song has that much to do with Jesus. I imagine Kanye wouldn't be too psyched about that. But to me, it's more about this emergency feeling that something needs to happen. And again, um, Kanye, it's been very difficult the last couple of years defending Kanye with wearing the Trump hat and all that. And my argument is always, well, okay, but um, he said that he liked Trump and then he actually successfully made inroads in prison reform. So I love political rappers. I don't think Chuck D ever did that much. I don't think he ever managed to have that much change. So in this one area, Kanye wearing the red hat might have made him one of the most influential political rappers of all time if he could actually reach the president and get him to majorly, perhaps change his mind. But the nice thing is that there's no part of this song where Kanye appears to be going in that direction. He doesn't appear to be saying slavery is a choice or golly gee, I love Trump because he's my dad. Uh, it seems to be much more in the realm of a real political rapper. And he's talking about, this is the thing. He keeps talking about what it does. Mass incarcer race, what it does. Genocide, what it does. Slavery, what it does. Now, one way of thinking about this uh, is that he's talking about He's, you know, he's talking about the injustice towards African Americans, right? Because right before those lines, he says, whole life being thugs, no choice, selling drugs. That could be it. 
I think there is a way to read it that he's actually making a larger complaint about capitalism. I think you could do a reading, and I said this about Jesus as King. I think there's a reading of Jesus as King where it's an anti-capitalistic uh, album. Check out my review up there, or there, whichever place. Um, I do think it's possible, or at least realistic, that the genocide and slavery is actually a product of the, the, the system that turns people into their value as opposed to being human beings. But that's maybe, that's maybe a bit too far. I'm, I'm gonna go back a little bit on there. I think we can say safely that what Kanye wants us to think is that it's the blood of Jesus that is the only answer. When it comes to Travis Scott being on here, or as my wife, the Dr. Mrs. Payne said, um, uh, oh, the guy from the cereal, because Travis Scott was on Reese's Puff Cereal last year and we bought like every box. Um, so I love his appearance here. First of all, it's cunning. Kanye is smart. He knows that my son's friends don't care about Kanye. They care about his shoes. They think he's funny, but they don't listen to his music. And they didn't listen to Life of Pablo, and they don't listen to Jesus. And they sure as hell don't listen to Jesus as king. I think maybe some of his friends thought Whoopity Scoop was funny. But beyond that, they, Kanye knows if you put Travis Scott on a track, somebody who he helped build, then the young kids will listen. But what's cool is that instead of just doing a, a standard, you know, okay, just do better eight bars and just get out and here's your check, the way that Travis Scott is integrated into the song is almost like that producer guy, whoever it is that's the, ooh, run it down, huh! Like he's barely in the song, but yet his presence is really important. Again, I've seen other commentaries saying that he could be taken out. I don't think so. He actually gets specific. He talks about the, the cap, capital punishment. He talks about the death penalty, calls it execution. This is a very strong political rap song because he, they're directly addressing mass incarceration, genocide, Black Lives Matter, and the death penalty, all things which disproportionately affect African Americans in America. And they're doing it all over this awesome bumping rap track that you want to dance to. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Which, by the way, I think I saw somewhere, someone mentioning that this actually sounds like a Dears Ire, which is a part of the, the Catholic Mass, which is the sort of the song of the dead. Uh, the beginning of The Shining is a Dears Ire as well. I think that's on purpose. And I think the strongest part of the song is this little moment before Kanye's main verse because Kanye doesn't really have any verses on here. He just kind of says like rain down on me and South Side Chicago and blood and blood and mass incarceration, all these repeated things. But right before his actual verse, which I'm gonna to get to, like the, the, the chorus just gets a lot stronger and the voices get a lot stronger. And again, this is where I, I would like to contradict anybody who says, this could just be on Jesus. Kanye learned how to use choral voices in Jesus as king. He wouldn't have known to do this, I don't think before Jesus is king. I just, I don't know. That just seems like lazy, lazy criticism. But what do I know? And then we get to Kanye's verse, his main verse. The, they don't want Kanye, they don't want Kanye to be Kanye, they want to calm Ye, all that. I'm of a split mind on this. My initial take was that this dilutes his message severely. It actually reminded me of You Need to Calm Down by Taylor Swift. I'm gonna let you finish, but it reminded me of Taylor Swift. I'm gonna let you finish, but first I'm gonna finish my point. Um, in the song, You Need to Calm Down, it was sort of like Taylor Swift talking about how important it is to not bash homosexuals and acceptance and all that, but then there was like this whole verse that was about people saying mean things about her on the internet. <laughs> and it's like, Taylor, like, which is it, you know? Or, like, is this gonna be an important song about everybody, or are you just gonna reduce it to complaining about people talking about you? So on the one hand, that's, I didn't like this verse for that reason, because it felt like he was making this grand statement about the need for our entire civilization to be drowned in Jesus's blood, to be completely reborn and just basically destroyed and rebuilt in some kind of purified vision. And then it's just like, they misquote me in my interviews. They went get into an interlude. And it's just, I know Kanye, I know they misquote you. I understand, but much like, I don't know, Morrissey and Michael Jackson, sometimes it's enough. <laughs> we get it. You get misquoted. You don't like the press. 
But on the other hand, when I watch this video um, with, my, with my kids and with my wife, um, they sort of said, no, I like that because that's sort of, that, you sort of have to have that in a Kanye song. Like, it wouldn't be a Kanye song if he wasn't talking about himself. And also, it's part of what makes him such a great artist, is that the same people who wrote him off after he shook hands with Trump and started talking about, like, Air Force One or whatever, um, now have to contend with the fact that he made a beautiful, disgustingly potent piece of political art that is of the moment and does the moment better than anyone else I've seen him do it. Okay, well, okay. That verse from Run the Jewels, that's better. That's a better illustration of Black Lives Matter. But I would say that this is a good companion piece to that and to this moment. And when they look back at this moment in history, you will have to accommodate for this song. There will have to be a chapter in your book, O Future Historians of 2020, about this song. So they don't want, they want calm yay. Whatever it is, Kanye will always reinvent to be something new and more interesting. It's funny because the, the video and the actual song, uh, the, the quote from the Bible is interesting. It's, uh, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. And that's how the song ends, I mean, how the song begins, and how this video ends. And this concept of the roaring lion walking about, seeking who, who he may devour. I think that's important. I think that this is a song of rage. I think it's a song of fear. And it's also a song of hope. And that might be the biggest gift that the Christian element can give. Because if you're a Christian, you're inherently hopeful unless you just think you're going to hell. But if you don't, you're inherently hopeful. You think that you've re been reborn. You think that you're in the arms of Jesus and that you're saved. So he's able to sort of see here and see the whole world as seeing him and his people in the, in the grips of Satan or in the grips of great forces that want to extinguish and all that. But there's always that hope that there'll be some rebirth and that we'll be able to be hanging around in a gym with our daughter, who's kind of dancing around and doing nothing. Because that is what we're fighting for. Okay, well I'm just waiting for that woman in that, in that white uh, Chevy Suburban to come back so I can explain to her the error of her ways. I don't think she's coming though. So until next time, uh, I hope this was an interesting video. I'm a little bit nervous that it wasn't, but I just get so, if I didn't make this video, I would be driving my wife crazy all night. Cause, Cause like, it's like I have to get it out. Damn, I love Kanye. Put on my cologne. All right, till next time uh, for uh, uh, Robert E. Lee. There's the camera. <laughs>